As Virgin Galactic prepares for the launch of its billionaire founder, Richard Branson, on Sunday 11th, that's July 11th, its main competitor, Blue Origin, which will launch its own billionaire founder, Jeff Bezos, on July 20th, ramps up its opposition marketing. Blue Origin revealed its launch date in May and this month auctioned off a journey to space from West Texas with Bezos for $28 million. Virgin Galactic announced its own launch of Branson, three crew members, and two pilots on July 1st. Their launch from the sky over New Mexico will be nine days earlier than Blue Origins. Who's going with Virgin Galactic? While Blue Origin prepares for its maiden New Shepard launch with a full six-person crew, Virgin Galactic has chosen the winner of a contest to travel on a future Spaceship 2 suborbital trip. Keisha Shehav of Antigua won two seats in a sweepstake sponsored by Virgin Galactic, charity fundraising site Amaze, and NGO Space for Humanity on November 24th. Shahav was one of 164,000 338 individuals who bought raffle tickets for the seats, raising $1.7 million for the Space for Humanity Citizen Astronaut Program. Shaw said in a YouTube video that going to space had been her childhood dream, and if she's going to get the opportunity, why not? Shahoff is a health and energy coach and will be the first Caribbean-born customer among Virgin Galactic's 700 current customers. She mentioned in the company announcement for the trip that she hopes her daughter, an astrophysics student, will take the second seat. Shahoff's flight date is yet to be announced by Virgin Galactic. Galactic. The competition was launched shortly after the firm's July 11th trip that transported business founder Richard Branson to space, with the winners flying on an early Virgin Galactic commercial voyage. Commercial flights, on the other hand, would not begin until at least late 2022, with the business completes a lengthy maintenance period for its vehicles, according to a timeline given by the company at an earnings call on November 8th. Who's going with Blue Origins? Blue Origin confirmed the six passengers who would travel on its next Shepard mission, NS-19. Slated December 9th from its Launch Site 1 facility in West Texas, and a day after that, Virgin Galactic made its announcement. This will be the third New Shepard voyage with passengers and the first full with the complement of six. The first two crewed flights each carried a total of four passengers each. Of the six passengers, two will be Blue Origin guests. Alan Shepard, who was the first American to go to space in 1961, will have his eldest daughter, Laura Shepard Churchley, to be one of the guests, while Michael Sean, who was formerly a professional football player and is currently a television host will be the other guest. Shahan, who covered the first crude New Shepard launch in July and interviewed Jeff Bezos immediately afterwards, said he was approached by the company about taking part in this journey and said yes without hesitation. On NBC's Good Morning America, he stated that when the flight was announced, all he wanted to do was be a part of it and the first aircraft he saw had captivated him. The remaining four are clients who have paid an undetermined amount for their seats. Dylan Taylor is the chairman and CEO of Voyager Space, which owns multiple space firms as well other creator of Space for Humanity. Evan Dick is a former investor and engineer with D.E. Shaw at Highbridge Capital. Lane Bess is the creator of a family fund that invests in technology startups and has previously assisted in the formation of two cybersecurity firms. He's also the father of Cameron Bess, a content creator who will be on the trip with him. The Besses will be the first parent-child team to go to space. Other news. U.S. Space Priorities Framework. The Biden administration's first National Space Council meets on Wednesday with Vice President Kamala Harris scheduled to describe the White House's approach on space policy. The White House issued a paper dubbed the United States Space Priorities Framework, which presents an outline of how the Biden administration hopes to create and implement national space policy and strategy in the future, with Harris heading the meeting on Wednesday. The framework underlies that the United States intends to promote and safeguard space data, goods, and services that allow American enterprises and generate American employment in industries as diverse as manufacturing, transportation, logistics, agriculture, finance, and communications. Furthermore, the framework states that the United States intends to publicly release Earth observation data in order to help both domestic and international efforts to address the climate catastrophe. Similarly, the White House paper states that it's moving space situational awareness information services to an open data platform housed by a U.S. agency in order to increase space flight safety, which sounds like a great step forward. SpaceX. SpaceX has smashed its own record for the most rockets launched into orbit in a single year. The newest Starlink mission, which launched from Cape Canaveral in Florida on Thursday, carried another set of internet satellites to low Earth orbit. It was the commercial space firm's 27th successful launch in 2021, surpassing the previous year's total of 26. Up to six additional launches are scheduled before the end of the year, with even more liftoffs possible in 2022. NASA to replace ISS. The Office of Audits at NASA has released a report outlining the agency's commitment to replacing the International 
Space Station, ISS, with one or more private space stations after the orbiting lab is decommissioned. Despite the fact that it's slated for 2024, all indications are that the ISS's operational life will be prolonged until 2030, when the agency expects to be able to transfer over human occupation of an orbit science station to a commercial business. NASA aims to have a commercial station operational by 2028, allowing for a two-year overlap before the ISS's expected retirement and deorbiting. However, that timescale is fraught with danger, owing in part to low market demand, insufficient finance, incorrect cost predictions, and still evolving needs. Total Solar Eclipse 2021 On Saturday, December 4th, the only complete solar eclipse of the year will occur, and if you reside in the extreme south of the planet, you'll be able to see it. If you don't, and if you're lucky and the Antarctic weather holds, there may be a live stream accessible. Comet Leonard On the 3rd, the dazzling Comet Leonard Leonard traveled near the globular cluster Micer 3 and Keynes Venetici. Both objects were visible in binoculars from dark sky locations and were close enough to watch in a single telescope field of view for a few hours. They were able to see it unless they found maybe too chilly, maybe polluted, or inconvenient to see the flyby. The virtual telescope project based in Rome broadcast the event at 10 p.m. Eastern Thursday, Friday, December 3rd. Newfound Rocky Exoplanet. The newly discovered JG 367b is in like anything we've seen in our own solar system, but there is hope that it will help put some light on one of the most mysterious and dark areas of the exoplanet family tree. The planet known as GJ 367b orbits a small, faint red dwarf star about 31 light years from the sun, according to recent research. According to study team members, JG 367b is a rocky world around 70% the size of Earth and 55% the mass of Earth, making it one of the lightest known exoplanets. It completes one circle in 7.7 hours, making it an ultra-short period, USP planet, an enigmatic and understudied class of world. Rocket Lab's next-gen neutron rocket. Rocket Lab's next-generation neutron rocket. Rocket Lab's designs aim to take reusability to a new height with a hungry hippo nose cone engineered for easy recovery and reuse. In a video conference yesterday, Rocket Lab's CEO Peter Beck revealed design details for the neutron rocket, the company's next medium lift booster, December 2nd. It's expected to fly for the first time in 2024. Kymeta plans to release one web terminal. Kymeta, an antenna manufacturer, announced a collaboration on December 1st to build a flat panel, electronically guided user terminal for fixed line applications on OneWeb's low Earth orbit broadband network. The antenna, according to Kymeta, will be based on the UA terminal, which was commercially introduced in November 2020 and will be available for purchase by the third quarter of 2022. According to the company, Kymeta's joint development agreement, JDA, with OneWeb, opens a door for terminals for mobility applications online as well as C. In addition to connecting OneWeb and Leo, technical teams from both firms hope to make the new terminal compatible with geostationary satellites, GEO. Well, that's the end of today's video. I hope you liked it. If you did, hit that like button and comment below to let us know what you think of Blue Origin and Virgin's galactic competitive space missions. Whose side are you on, Mr. Bezos or Mr. Branson? Also, let us know which of the latest space news intrigued you the most to keep seeing content like this of course all you need to do is subscribe to our channel ding that notification bell and once again hit that like button stay tuned see you next time take care